To follow up on the issues touched upon by Francine and, and Mike, uh, I have been joined here on stage by Elisa Ferreira, uh, the European Commissioner for Cohesion and Reforms, uh, uh, to sort of kick off our next panel, uh, Placeship European Bauhaus, a journey to the future. So, uh, in addition to uh, the commissioner, we are also being joined uh, remotely uh, by Marcos Rosempera, member of the European Parliament and founder of the new European Bauhaus Friendship Group uh, in the European Parliament, uh, who is joining us from Brussels. Uh, also, we have uh, Michaela Magas, industry commons concept creator from uh, Sweden, uh, Paivi Takokalio, president uh, of the Bureau of European Design Associations, uh, who is joining us from Finland. Uh, and finally, Shigroban, uh, who in, in my mind is one of the most brilliant architects uh, alive today, uh, who's joining us from Tokyo. So uh, welcome, everybody. Hello. Um, maybe to, uh, to begin, uh, the title of this panel is um, Place Ship European Bauhaus. A journey to the future and it sounds to me like a reference to Buckminster Fuller's book from the late 60s titled Operating Manual for Spaceship Earth um, and, and, and already then uh, Buggy Fuller was making us aware that Earth is a single interconnected ecosystem hurling through space and that we need to take very good care of it because if that spaceship crashes or breaks down uh, we do not have any alternatives. So, so maybe just uh, to, to open with, with you, Commissioner, is, is that what the new European Bauhaus is, is an operating manual for spaceship uh, Europe? Yes, it is. It is a little bit uh, of, that, uh, of that program, but it is a very essential one. Because when we think globally, as uh, your quote, which is very, very appropriate, then we have got to make it go down to everyday life, to each person, to the place uh, where you live, uh, to the place that is uh, to the quality of the environment outside our home. And if you don't take this message and you don't get a lifestyle in, that is compatible with our macro objective, uh, then uh, we will not reach it. And uh, I would like to quote someone that uh, uh, that I often quote, like uh, it's Seneca, an old philosopher, that says, uh, well, there is, no, uh, there is no good wind if you don't know where you want to, to get to. Uh, and and, and uh, if we don't have a vision, and then you don't uh, disaggregate our targets into very small uh, elements of our everyday life, it won't work. Uh, and so Bauhaus is about it. It's about the way, the way you think, the way you live, the way you interact with the environment, but that doesn't mean that you don't have a good, healthy, comfortable and beautiful way of living. And that's what we are aiming at. And uh, I'm very proud that, uh, that Europe and the European Commission under the, the auspices of, of, of its president just launched this, trying to give more flavor and more content to a vision of a green, a more sustainable, uh, a more balanced, a more inclusive, also in the sense of leaving no people. I mean, it's not an elite program, it's, it's for everyday life. And so in this style of asking everybody in the world, not only in Europe, but in the world, what can we learn from each other? How can we join together in this, in this journey? Uh, in the sense of what exactly you said in your initial words. So I think it's, it's a very challenging, very interesting, very motivating uh, new area of interchange, of co-designing, of listening, of learning with each other. And we are very privileged to have people like you and all our guests that have done it already uh, to share with us uh, your thoughts and uh, uh, your lessons, because we have to learn with each other. I was thinking maybe, maybe uh, Marcos, you could uh, expand a little bit uh, uh, on, on, on Elisa's uh, words. To what, what, what do you 
believe uh, could or should be the scale and scope uh, of the new European Bauhaus? Well, uh, thank you very much, Bjarke, for giving me the floor and good, good <laughs> afternoon to all, all, all the attendees, uh, speakers, organizers, and in general to all, all of those interested in, in this important initiative we are addressing at this conference. Well, uh, I think uh, that the new European uh, Bauhaus uh, should be a previous initiative to the renovation wave. Uh, we need uh, to place this initiative into uh, a previous moment and we have to arrive to the real life of the people. Uh, we have to, we have to uh, take the real architecture and a good architecture. Uh, we know that uh, architecture can uh, change uh, the life of the people, the way we live, but only good architecture can improve our lives and we need to improve our life, we need to uh, take our this uh, amount of funding that we are going to spend on the next years with the renovation wave uh, and with the next generation uh, funds, and we need to improve the the way we live uh, of the people. Uh, this new uh, European Bauhaus comes at a crucial moment for Europe, at a time of transition towards economic recovery, green deal, digitalization, and social cohesion. And I am a firm believer that architecture can unite all these concepts and put itself at the service of citizens to fully improve their quality of life. Fantastic. Actually, um, maybe before I and I and I think it's a it's a great segue to talk a little bit about the power of uh, of design and and architecture with the with with the group of panelists we have here. But I just want to remind the people uh, s sitting out there that um, we have Slido, and if you would like to address. A specific question to uh, to one of the panelists. Uh, please do so, and uh, uh, and I will uh, I will read it to uh, to them directly. But 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 maybe um, um, M M Michaela, M maybe you could uh, could tell me a little bit by what, why you know we know that climate change is a scientific challenge and maybe a technological challenge. But why why does design matter uh, in in this case or and and maybe in general? Thank you. Yes, I very much welcome the inclusion of designers and creative practitioners in this process. Um, and I could talk about uh, uh, why design matters for hours. Um, but maybe in particularly in this context, in conjunction with science, you know, what is important about the design method? Um, there is a particular way in which design creates new knowledge. Um, you as an architect, you have to be a polymath. You have to understand construction physics, uh, material properties, sustainability of construction, but also its impact on the surrounding environment, its impact on the societal and cultural context. Um, traditionally, uh, scientific methods of inquiry, which are very linear and uh, relying on deduction and induction, which generates a conclusion, um, appeared very logical and highly rational. Um, creative practitioners and designers' methods of inquiry, which had to address subject matter from so many different perspectives, as I just mentioned in the case of architecture, um, appeared a little chaotic because they were opening up too many possibilities. Now, in terms of decision-making processes, this was uh, very often associated with something irrational and per uh, per perhaps instinctive. Now, in today's climate and with the current situation that we're facing, we're facing so many grand challenges that are presenting unknown unknowns. These are the sort of new situations that are creating surprising results where prior art doesn't exist. There is nothing that we can scientifically refer to. And in this context, scientific methodology can be complemented by this really uh, well uh, practiced, and as we can see sort of from, from the evidence from our high level uh, round table at the, at the uh, New European Bauhaus, so many practitioners who have this great wealth of experience of interrogating subject matter from multiple perspectives. And this suddenly allows us to open the doors for new knowledge, which can help us create the right source of solutions. And incredible, yeah. Like, like some, sometimes, if I have to explain uh, people the architectural method, uh, which is dif different from the kind of typical uh, hy hy hypothetical deductive method, mm -hmm. it's almost like when when you watch um, crime shows uh, and you see that they have to solve, uh, like, un unravel this kind of cartel. You you have 
this kind of big big board full of uh, of evidence mm -hmm. where you somehow have to try to look at everything at one glance to see if some unexpected connections uh, uh, appear and, and maybe cl climate challenge is a similar um, I, I was I also wanted to uh, to ask uh, uh, shigeru san uh, what what uh, what do you believe that um, architecture or design can contribute uh, uniquely to um, to the crisis of, uh, of of climate well um as uh, we know that the, the building industry itself created uh, the 40 percent of the co2 so that the, we are really responsible for this climate uh problem and environmental issue so we have to drastically change the use of the material to the uh, renewable materials like wood and bamboo and so on we should stop using well we cannot stop but the, we have to reduce using the, the steel and the, the concrete as much as possible also in order to make a building affordable uh, we have to work with the uh, the non-skilled people so, and we have to use the uh, the available material in, uh, locally with non-skilled people to make building affordable so that kind of education is i think is very important uh so i, I think that's what what we can do yes, I, I think it's also interesting um so sometimes people think of ecology uh, and economy as as opposites uh, but but in fact both words are rooted in the greek word for house which is oikos because it's basically economy is the management of the household and ecology is the study of where you live. So in that sense, I, I, I absolutely agree. We need to find methods and, and ideas that are scalable because they are affordable. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, as, as one last round, and then uh, I'll give it up also to, uh, to the people out there. Uh, uh, Paivi, um, sort of in, 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 in what different ways do you see the, um, the design profession contributing to the to the formulation of the new European Bauhaus, uh, may maybe not just uh, uh, the specific mission, but maybe even in, in the phase that we are in now, uh, where, where we are sort of trying to find out exactly what will, will this be? Thank you, Bjarke. Uh, a very good question, uh, and I'm happy to try to uh, answer it. Um, definitely, what, what we can see already in, in the new U European Bauhaus initiative, that this is not only about buildings, not only about places, and not only about design's role in creating products or buildings or, or uh, environments, um, but also design plays a role uh, in um, in um, strategically creating what the whole initiative is about and we can also uh, see this in the very first phase of the initiative the co-design phase which is now ongoing uh, if it was not done in a co-design way as it now is we could never really collect the, the feelings and needs and, and uh, sentiments of uh, individuals all over Europe or organizations all over Europe. So definitely design plays a strategic role uh, in the, the first co-design phase. And I can easily see that design plays a similar role throughout the whole process. And if it becomes a movement, it will be part of the movement as well in many, many layers from product design to strategically uh, creating the, the initiative itself. I, mean, I, I, um, I have a question from Jan Wurm, who asks, uh, what key new disciplines do you think are crucial to integrate in the design process of inclusive, beautiful and regenerative places? Um, does, does anyone feel uh, inspired to answer this one? Uh, I'm going I'm I'm to pick one. I'm going to pick Michaela. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to jump in there. Um, 
the new sort of professions we are actually uncovering every single day. So this is a combination of prototyping on the ground, seeing what prototypes, uh, prototyping new solutions, what sort of impact it has on human experience. And what we have been discovering is we are discovering actually new human abilities uh, in these new circumstances and new virtuosities even and new forms of accessibility that are completely flipping our uh, ideas on who is able to do something. So, for instance, from the accessibility world, we have found new virtuosos with new kinds of environments and systems. So we, as, as everybody understands right now, we're going through a paradigm shift in terms of education, in terms of what sort of skills are needed in the future, both in terms of uh, technologies and uh, material science. And in this respect, there are a tremendous amount of new hybrid occupations that are coming up as sort of uh, a very interesting and uh, potential to sort of drive systems in completely new ways. The most interesting bit about this possibly being that when we integrate technologies, um, it is not just a matter of uh, uh, people being subjects for analysis. It's about people driving things. Can I, BRK, add something? Yes. Yeah, uh, just a thought. Uh, the whole initiative, the new European Bauhaus initiative, is uh, eager to listen everyone and to hear everyone's voice and especially the non-usual suspects. I would say that this counts in relation to disciplines as well. So, uh, and the disciplines uh, taking part in the initiative, I hope this is a grassroots level movement as well. So it's a bottom up movement and disciplines who feel themselves that they have something to give in for the initiative should really become involved uh, themselves. This is not a top-down process where, where anyone asks specific disciplines to take part. Anyone can take part if they so feel. So this should consider disciplines as well. well I, I, th I, think, I think you're absolutely right. I also think that one of the root causes for the, for the challenges we face is actually the 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 distinction or like in the kind of silos of the different disciplines that uh, it's it, I, if, if something doesn't fit within a certain profession or, uh, or a certain scope, uh, it is discarded uh, as, as, as not having value, which, which essentially leads to emitting CO2 into the atmosphere or, or methane or d dumping plastics in the oceans, etc. So, so I, I do think that this, this kind of call for for hearing and, and involving the unusual voices is, uh, is, is incredibly relevant. M maybe one thing to clarify, I don't know, maybe, um, maybe first uh, the, 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 fr the friends of the Bauhaus, I was thinking, is, is, this, is this primarily about buildings or does it go beyond? Or, and, and, and if yes, in, in which ways? Well, uh, on, on, on the basis, uh, we can transform not only our buildings. I think uh, this, this new initiative, this new European Bauhaus is on all scales, from furniture to our houses, our buildings, but also our neighborhood, neighbors, uh, also our cities, on uh, our big uh, urban areas. But not only urban areas, also rural areas. We have to we have to attend all the scales. But uh, especially in these uh, post-pandemic times, in which uh, we all have suffered the the lack of public space, uh, we 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 have to attend uh, not only to buildings, uh, as you have said, but also to public space. Uh, we have to requalify our public space. We have to to be able to use our public space uh, uh, in order to to be uh, another time to be for everyone, not only for cars, as you have mentioned before. And we have to to involve all the society, all the rural and urban areas, and all the dimensions on this new European Bajos. I, I think it's not only uh, uh, about buildings. Uh, it's it's all about uh, all design, uh, the, the places in where we live. I also <laughs> agree that it's not about the building. I think it's about education. And the original Bauhaus building was very important. And the student came to the one location to study. But now mm -hmm. I think a new Bauhaus, educators, teachers have to go all over the world 
to teach, not bringing a student to one location, to one to one the building. I think the building is less important, but also we can make temporary building with local student and local people. We don't need a permanent building. We can make a temporary building uh, with a student with local ma available material. So I think the education is most important. I, I, I just, um... Uh, Shigeru-san, since you have the, the, the word, uh, a question that I think could be addressed to you, Art van Bezoyen asks, uh, could the new European Bauhaus establish a new material aesthetic by strongly focusing on the use, promotion of bio-based or recycled materials in a similar way, materials such as concrete and steels offered artists, designers and architects new possibilities in the historical Bauhaus? I think the material is very important, but we don't have to innovate only new materials. For example, during the war uh, in Japan, we didn't have enough steel. We used bamboo to reinforce concrete. This because re bamboo reinforced concrete. So we can s we don't need to use a steel to make a, a reinforced concrete. So we can even the, go back to the the the, the history that the, the, uh, the historical building system and material was more economy, uh, economical, ecological, sustainable. So it's important to, to make uh, new materials, but also we have to go back to the historical way of making building, making using the materials. No, I, I, I think you're absolutely right that there's like a, a, a ton of, uh, of, of ancient and vernacular knowledge that has maybe gone missing that can be, uh, that can be uh, rediscovered. I, I, I was also I was also thinking um, m maybe in a kind of European context uh, 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 a, a question to you, Commissioner. Are, are there any examples that you can think of that uh, in 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 sort of in the history of the Euro European Union where a similar initiative or a, a, a similar attempt to invent an institution uh, uh, or a, a movement? Uh, that doesn't really have any kind of clear predecessors. Uh, well, mm -hmm. it's uh, not uh, in terms of movement. I would I would say that uh, that the the creation of the European Union as such was a reaction to a situation uh, on which we had to think and rethink out of the box, because and the and the fun, uh, when uh, I would say funny, but one of the, the interesting things about the European Union is that we really uh, didn't predefine where we would go and in each crisis we reinvent ourselves and we go a little bit deeper and further but i would like to, to to underline in the previous debate the fact when when you asked okay are we talking about buildings and i think it was shigeru that said uh, no we are talking about education and i would like to underline this because we have a problem the problem is that we are destroying our environment we have another problem. Our quality of life is not what it should be or could be. Uh, then we are faced with the massive exclusion of people uh, from, the, the, from the common uh, well-being because uh, they cannot afford it, because they are excluded, because they are unemployed, because there are huge differences across Europe. Uh, certain regions have a, a, an income per capita of 32% of the average but there are regions that have 260% of the average. So we are dealing with so many differences. We have got to bridge them. But when we are faced with this, this challenge of the planet being broken by our activity, uh, we have to understand where we want to go. But then what we have to do is to change our way of thinking, to change our culture, to change our, our, our um, perceptions uh, of what is to, to survive in this planet and leave the planet uh, survival with, survive with it. And, and th th this change of mentality, this change of culture uh, is, is, I think, uh, what we, we must think of. And for this, as, uh, as Mikael was, uh, was saying, and, and uh, the other contributors, and, and Moz, and, uh, w what we were trying to do is to engage everybody, and each mm -hmm. of us has something to contribute to this. Mm -hmm. If we all are concentrating on where we want to go, all of us, we have something to say, we have something to mobilize, and, and to live in a different way. And so uh, I think uh, in a critical moment, 
uh, and we are in a critical moment and the ecosystems have been affected and the, the, the virus are spreading and the, the economy is collapsing. And so how are we going to get back uh, to normal life being normal, probably very different from the previous normal. But uh, what lessons, lessons can we learn and how can we interpret the new challenges that are, that are, that are in front of us? And, and it is re really a, a root movement because we are asking on the ground who can help us to start a movement. And once we start a movement, we make the change. And, mm -hmm. uh, and this is the message. And this is why I think this is really a very, a very innovative, a very out of the box uh, kind of vision. We don't know exactly where we are going to, 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 to go. Uh, we don't have all the details. Uh, we are co-designing. Uh, so let's, let's, let's hear what people have to say. That's the message. Yeah, right. I think I think maybe also like expand a little bit. Like it's 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 clear that we are sitting with uh, I think a safe distance of two meters uh, from each other, uh, which is why we can uh, allow ourselves to be unmasked. But but um, to to what extent uh, do you see um, that the, the the major economical uh, challenge of of um, of of rising from from lockdown that that hopefully we will. Uh, that we will get engaged with uh, in in the near future uh, uh, is compatible or aligned or or or, um, or opposed to to the challenge of uh, of addressing climate change in a. It is it is definitely when I mean all the instruments that we have created they come with a new DNA, so in fact we are uh, doing something unusual as well. It's uh, when we were faced with massive crisis we said okay. Uh, we have got to go to the markets and borrow and get all this money and liquidity and try to bring it in and to try to use it to rebuild Europe, to rebuild the industries, the, the companies, the small and medium companies, the universities, the research centers. So let's do it together, but let's do it on an, a different basis. So we have got to be definitely greener. We have got to be more digital, more technological, but also this technological drive uh, cannot be uh, a reason for, a, uh, for a, a fracture in society. Uh, when we are talking about digital, of course, we are, we are apparently in a normal situation with everybody getting in and out. But if you don't have the network, if you don't have the, uh, the, 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 the infrastructure to connect, or if you, mm -hmm. if you are still excluded in terms of your education background or social background. So the digital divide uh, is an issue. And uh, more and more, uh, we have to care about people that, uh, that uh, have got to be stimulated to get the conditions to participate fully uh, in our common uh, recovery uh, from an economic, from a social, and even from a political point of view. Because when you are excluded by a system, you become um, aggressive against it. And you say, OK, they don't care about me. I don't care about them. This is nothing to do with me. And this is the reason why this project cannot be at all an elite kind of project just for the few. And we have got to be very careful that uh, even people that, uh, that don't know that they can contribute, of course they can contribute. And in the previous panel, you were just listening to small towns, small examples from where you can learn so much. And, uh, and uh, also Siguru was mentioning the traditional arts of building. There is so much knowledge there. Uh, so we have got to research, we have got to, to, to find what is the most intelligent and the most compatible way uh, to rebuild. Uh, but there is really a very, very strong DNA uh, along these three uh, elements in recovery. It's green, it has got to be digital in terms, in sense of technological, and it has been cohesive. Fantastic. Like I, I, um, I, ha I have a great question here. Someone asked, um, who is anonymous? Uh, everybody keeps saying this will be participatory, but what exactly does participation mean? What will this mean for the different ideas about democracy in Europe? Uh, uh, Michaela, you were quick, but uh, I, I'd love to hear Michaela first, and and and, and anyone else who uh, and who, who and five inspired. Yeah. Um, it, it, 
there are ways that we have already done this and that are working beautifully. Um, one of the things we would like to encourage is mass prototyping on the ground of, of potential solutions, mass experimentation. Um, this is another method that comes from uh, art and design practice, really, uh, and that we can learn from. Um, but what is wonderful about it is that turning thoughts and ideas into practice uh, drops the barriers of jargon, of uh, the different languages, of uh, different cultural backgrounds. Um, it really encourages participation uh, in a way that doesn't cancel each other out. All of the knowledge that's brought to the table is incredibly useful um, and it's brought together to build something, to make something, to what we say, get our hands dirty. Now, there are so many good things about this. One is that we start to understand each other and appreciate each other's knowledge when we do that. But the other thing that happens is a sense of achievement because usually when we do those things, they are driven by grand missions. And in this case, the missions are obviously um, set by our ambitions for the Green Deal. Um, and these grand missions galvanize people together. So when, uh, when you build something together, uh, you have this sense of achievement. And if you imagine every single participant, and so let's say, I mean, I would love to see this roll out across all European regions. I mean, let's face it, we have in Europe around, uh, I think uh, uh, the vast majority of cities are between 100,000 and 400,000 people. And they are really nice, agile ecosystems where people can join forces and also across the regions. Now, if you imagine every person involved, every person prototyping, who are, is able to, through this process, lift one step in their personal development, progress one step in their personal development, you have a phenomenal societal transformation. And this is what we want to encourage with this, uh, with this mechanism of the new European Bauhaus. Excellent. Yeah, if I may just continue on, on this, uh, actually excellent um, what you said, Michaela. What I would like to add is that um, in this process, the new European Bauhaus process, the co-design phase that's at, at, at the moment ongoing is already a proof of the value of um, a participatory process. All the inputs that are there um, are great. They come from different parts of, of Europe, from different types of organizations, from different types of, of um, individuals. So the across disciplines uh, ambition is already very much there. I have seen this myself as well when BEDA, uh, Bureau of European Design Associations, we as organization have encouraged dialogues related to the new Bauhaus uh, all over Europe. Um, so if if you can, I could even say that that one goal is achieved already to a certain extent that across disciplines and participatory processes happen. But what is what is important with the participatory processes and co-design processes is that when you start listening to people, when you start listening to citizens or organizations, you also hear them out and you also um, take them seriously. So the process needs a continuation. It needs to be taken into account in every phase of the initiative. Uh, so you just can't listen to people and then forget it. You have to keep it going all the way till the very end. Uh, and this, this will need to work in a small scale uh, and in, in the macro scale as well. So certainly this is also a challenge, but it's, it's, uh, we have started to tackle it and quite successfully at the moment, I would say. I, I think maybe there's a question here that, that, that follows a little bit up on this idea of participation, but at a kind of local government scale. What's the role of local governments in facilitating the uptake of the new European Bauhaus? Ask Caitlin Dietz. If I can answer that, yes, from my point of view, I'm sure there are others who who can can um, add to my approach. But I have a uh, we have a 
an experience on this, both in Finland and in other countries through BEDA as well, that local governments are very interested in the initiative. And what happens in many places at the moment is that because local governments have programs and, and strategies, they do that work all the time. Uh, a lot of that work is now, as we speak, related to Green Deal and roadmaps related to, to green transformation on regional level and national level. Uh, what happens with local governments is that they combine, they put together the new European Bauhaus initiative and the strategy work and, and programming work they do on their daily basis. And I think this is this is absolutely useful. You don't invent new European Bauhaus in a vacuum. It comes to support what already happens uh, on local government's level. Yeah, yes. Just, I, I didn't want to, to, to overload my, my participation, but in, in relation to this specific issue, For sure. uh, I mean, th th all, this, all this, uh, this increase in financing that countries will have, it will go uh, down to the economy and it will go down also to the municipalities. And so more than anything else, it's the way in which these municipalities are going to use their funds uh it, that that becomes absolutely crucial because they are the closest level to the citizens and so if we don't mobilize them in this sense uh i think we we risk to to miss a very important opportunity because there will there will, will be funding there will be uh objectives there will be development strategies different all over europe as rika was 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 mentioning but but in the, if we if 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 uh, in the, in the content, in the, in, the, in the building up of the plan of investments, we don't take these concerns into account. There is no way you can legislate on the issue. So that's why it has got to be absorbed and introduced as a precondition for the use of the funds that, of course, it is there in terms of percentage of funds, but the quality, you cannot, you cannot decide, you cannot legislate on quality. Uh, you can you can uh, you can share uh, uh, a principle, a philosophy, a way of doing it, and so we have also to take into account that it, this is also also for this reason, because we are recovering and because there are funds and there are investments going on. The way we do we do them, the choices we make, they will be paramount for what we are going to be in ten years' time, and this is reason why, uh, from cohesion policy angle, that's my my duty here in in, in the commission uh, i think we have got to bear in mind the absolute the essential relevance of of this concept of building back but better and and so uh, i'm sorry to get in but i think it was very important that we don't that we go back to the ground and to the special conditions that we have now so doing it good i mean well not not really anyway yeah i, I saw i saw marcos also um uh, yes, I, I, I wanted to add uh, just one thing. I completely agree with Elisa Ferreira. Uh, I, we think that it is the time for local governments. Uh, it is the time for towns and cities. And we, we are going to have, as he has said now, uh, a lot of a, a, a big amount of money that must arrive to towns and cities. Uh, for example, in my group, my friends group, uh, we are we represent more than 30 maps for more than 15 countries. And they all say to me that in their respective member states, uh, there are a, a lot of cities that are very, very interested uh, in this new European Bauhaus. There, there is much expectation now uh, in cities, uh, authorities, local authorities. And local authorities, uh, uh, they must be the receptors of these funds and they they must be a, a very uh, primary actor in this movement uh, all across europe i i agree with with the commissioner yeah i i also almost believe that you know there's um there's a, a field of, uh, of of science or research called uh, co collective intelligence and mm. and you often see that in companies like very large companies and this can also be a very large city or uh, or a large uh, uh, continent or a region like like europe um when things start going awry uh people on the floor 
already knew a long time ago that things were not really right and they, they had identified that certain practices were completely sen senseless, but somehow in the management room or in the, in, in the parliament, uh, uh, no, no offense to, uh, to anyone like that, yeah, some of that information doesn't trickle up. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and therefore, I think also m maybe part of the whole participatory agenda could really be to develop ways to access this tacit knowledge that rests mm -hmm. on the ground in in the different member countries and i think what everybody has been speaking to is this idea of that it, it may it may be a if a, a global challenge but the, but the answer is 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 is, is very local um did, did anyone uh, uh ask for the word otherwise i'm, I'm going to find another question from sure. uh, um there's a good one here I think she granted us permission to take another question. Uh, so Alexandra Schnatner says, um, coming from a cross-border region, the question here would be, how can working, connecting, educating, and also building across borders be improved and focused on? And if this should be an aim of the new European Bauhaus? Five Yeah. Well, uh, across borders, uh, across uh, borders, uh, geographically, or across borders, uh, across uh, as uh, across disciplines. Which one was it? Uh, it, it was. It was. A, it was a border question. Which where, where where obviously Europe has a has an advantage in the sense that we 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 are at least a bit a bigger a bigger entity than a single nation but um but of course because i i happen to live uh, i happen to live in a region in finland which um uh, does a lot across borders finland between finland sweden and norway and um in many ways th this is i think an interesting question in the context of the new european bauhaus as well because uh, as the new Bauhaus is a European initiative. It could encourage um, solutions that are related to across borders uh, ambitions as well. So I don't see that as a big challenge, but uh, obviously um, national borders, geographical borders, they, they, uh, pre uh, they, they create uh, barriers, but Perhaps it could be a specific focus in the Bauhaus initiative to, to try to lower the, the barriers and create uh, solutions which work across countries as well and across borders, definitely. And this is very much related to many regions um, in Europe, both in the north and in the south, I'm, I'm sure. So absolutely, I would very much encourage this myself. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I get yeah. Yes, please. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I'm very glad that Pavi brought in this this uh, experience because, in fact, uh, almost all all borders of, U of Europe are covered with the special uh, programs by what we call Interreg, and uh, that is that is regional support, regional funds support uh, that exactly uh, tries to uh, to um, to stimulate. Uh, programs of cooperation across borders so that uh, with time the, the border almost vanishes. It, they, they become more visible again now with the pandemic because certain member states, uh, the initial instinct was to close borders. Uh, then uh, then uh, uh, with pressure, I mean, they were opened again. But, but, uh, but um, there are programs all over and trying to answer the question that was specifically put. Uh, you, you, it's difficult to find a, a border that is not covered by these cooperation programs. So one important um, outcome would be exactly, as, as Pavi was mentioning, uh, to, to bring the, the, the Bauhaus concept into the way in which you organize these cooperation programs. And the uh, and programs exist. Uh, I mean, the uh, the, the the Nordic uh, countries are covered by a lot, a lot of programs of cooperations. Some of them are done uh, at the regional level. Uh, the others at the local level. 
um, but also there, there are programs in the, uh, that cover the frontier between uh, Portugal and Spain, between, uh, I mean, Greece and uh, all the neighboring countries, uh, the Pyrenees, the, uh, you, you, you name it, and you have a program. So, uh, again, going back to what I said before, it's a matter of, uh, of uh, having this concept, okay, what can we do that, that combines uh, beauty, uh, I mean, uh, sustainability and, uh, and inclusion uh, in, in specific programs, be it in schools, cooperation of programs, be it physically, exchanging experiences, be it also in the management of, the, of some infrastru infrastructures that, that are part of the border. Sometimes it's how to manage a mountain, uh, how to manage a river, uh, and for this you cannot do it uh, adequately if you don't, if you don't uh, recognize the other side. Uh, so the unity of the river requires that both borders are aware and that they agree and that they discuss how to manage it. Uh, and so we have so many experiences from this side and also from the, from the, with these examples, but also, for instance, if you want to, to do a, a touristic uh, program for an area, uh, you cannot have discontinuities of, 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 uh, of the management, for instance, of the nature on one side and the other. So uh, the concept of Bauhaus should and can, and I thank you very much for this question and for the answer that was already uh, coming from Pivy, that, that in fact we have got to introduce also this concept when we organize these uh, interreg programs of cooperation, of development. And from here you stimulate a lot of, um, of initiatives from this ground uh, energy. Uh, and so often we start with, uh, with a very specific project and then we did, we mobilized the whole community because people have something to add to the project. So this was done in the past. It can be done with a much more strategic kind of vision uh, under the concept of the, of the, the new European Bauhaus. Yeah, also, also now that we're talking about borders and, and, and of course the, uh, the Bauhaus 1.0 was uh, you know, rooted in, in Europe, but became a very international movement. Uh, on, as, as part of the round table, we, we have uh, Shiroban, who's, um, uh, uh, you know, not a European, but has been practicing in, in Europe uh, over, over many years. I, I, I wonder to, to what extent the kind of um, Japanese perspective or the perspective of, of the outsider that you see any kind of uniquely European uh, challenges or uniquely European uh, potentials or, or, or anything from, from, from Japan or, or Asia that, 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 that might be um, an, an interesting perspective vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, the current challenges? Um, actually, this ecological thinking is the, something we traditionally have done. Without this, uh, having this kind of uh, the, the philosophy, uh, our t Japanese traditional living style was very ecological without these ideas. For example, uh, actually even now, we don't use uh, air conditioning or heating when we sleep. We have very thick uh, blanket during the, the, the evening without any heating. So even now, the, the, our air conditioning automatically uh the the air conditioning is off maybe the the, the 10 minutes after we go to bed then the, the room becomes the warm just before we uh, wake up so anyway traditionally even now uh we don't use air conditioning uh while uh, we are uh, sleep even when we are out of the the house the air condition air conditioning stop automatically so that, that uh, traditionally we have this kind of ecological way of uh, the living. Even now we uh, the continue doing this. So for us that the ecological way of living was what we have uh, used to be. So it's nothing new for us actually. But we have to be very careful that, that uh, the new technologies and the new lifestyle, we are really the, the, the wasting the, the so much energies. Yeah, actually, like the, the, when, when you're talking about, um, you also mentioned uh, natural materials before, and, and I think uh, uh, obviously you have been like a, a pioneer in architecture, sort of reminding us of the, 
of the kind of beauty and and utility uh, and strength of of materials like uh, sort of mundane materials such as cardboard tubes or uh, or, or paper, uh, uh, and, and even reminding us that like very spectacular and complex buildings can be built out of uh, of, of simple wood. Um, there's a question here from um, uh, Uwe Kies, who's asking: replacing emission-heavy materials with bio-based. How do we make sure that these resources are used sustainably and not adding to over-exploitation? And, and, and I wonder, um, maybe also, Shiro san if, if you have a, uh, an answer for Uwe. Well, is that question that the, the, this new material development, that the, we may have to increase the, the, the damages of the environment? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if, um, if the question is like, if suddenly all new buildings are made out of wood, how do we make sure that we're not chopping down uh, you know all the forests like uh, it's 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 almost like sometimes the um, it's a bit like when i was a kid uh it was great to eat a lot of pasta and 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 spaghetti and potatoes and then suddenly we learned that it was not so great and then you had to eat a lot of meat but then you should be careful so like, so you know every five or ten years the this kind of health uh, health uh, nutrition advice uh, changes a bit and maybe similarly i think the question here is like if we suddenly change all the building materials yeah. to natural materials how do we how do we make sure when we're not over exploiting nature i see actually the even the the, the amount of the, the wood we are consuming in europe for building is uh, much less than the, the amount of the the, the 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 forest is growing we still have so much uh, extra amount of the, the the natural resources to to be uh, consumed so we don't have to worry so much about the uh, the, the the, the, the damaging the forest as long as it's controlled. So there's, there's so much more to, to be used. Even the, 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 the bamboo, I think we have to uh, forest no more bamboo. Even in Africa, it used to be a lot of the bamboo forest, but when the European people uh, colonized them, they just uh, deforested the bamboo because they didn't know how to use the bamboo. So there is so much uh, the possibility to grow more trees and bamboo all over the world. Fantastic. Um, it's, um, it's also my sad duty to be the controller of the time. Uh, and, uh, and, and we are approaching the end of the, uh, of the session. Um, I'm, I'm thinking, um, I mean, I, I, think, I think we've heard some, uh, some, some great uh, uh, great inputs. I think it's very clear uh, that that the commitment to participa particip participation participation is like an alcohol test. It's a sign that I, I'm very close to the four o'clock coffee. But uh, the, the commitment to participation is is a real one, uh, not just in the implementation, but also in the ideation and the generation. Uh, and that it, it may be that uh, this is a European initiative but it's really an invitation to every single citizen to um to uh, to uh, contribute and to uh, to uh, uh, ideate and uh, and initiate initiatives that can then be sort of powered and 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 uh, and expanded upon and, and i think maybe michaela said it very beautiful when she said that uh, if if the result of the new european bauhaus is that every single individual in the in the entire union takes a single step up in personal development that will be a kind of nuclear explosion of uh, of, of of human impact yep. that uh, that that is exactly the kind of resources we need in uh, uh, in this situation um i i think maybe uh, for once in my life uh, i am gonna end uh, this on time so i would like to thank uh, the the entire panel uh, uh, uh marcos uh, uh, elisa uh, michaela uh, shigeru san and paivi Thank you so much for, you. for kicking off this uh, this super important and urgent conversation. Thank you, Bjarke. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Bjarke. Thank you so much. And and, and maybe um, uh, with with the last seconds, it's it's been a it's been a very sort of a, a, a exciting and energetic um, uh, early, early afternoon. Uh, we're gonna, we're now going to have a 15 minute uh, virtual coffee break, uh, and then uh, we will see you all again uh, at the 4:15. Central European time.